Hello everyone, I got 5 jokes for you today. The CIA is in the process of recruiting 3 potential agents, consisting of 2 men and a woman. For the ultimate test of loyalty and commitment, they bring one of the male candidates to a closed door and provide him with a firearm. We need to be absolutely certain that you'll follow orders, regardless of the circumstances, the interviewer explains. Behind this door, you'll find your wife seated in a chair. Your task is to shoot her. The man, shocked, responds, You can't be serious. I could never bring myself to shoot my own wife. Then you're not the right person for this job, the interviewer concludes. The second man is presented with the same instructions. After hesitating for five minutes, he emerges with tears streaming down his face and says, I just can't do it. Finally, it is the woman's turn to face the test, but this time with her husband as the target. She is handed the gun and proceeds into the room. For the first 10 seconds, there is complete silence. Suddenly, a cacophony of crashing, banging, and screaming erupts. A few minutes later, the woman emerges from the room, wiping sweat from her brow. It seems someone forgot to load the gun, she reports, but not to worry, I got him with a chair leg. A passionate duck hunter was on the lookout for a new bird dog to join him on his hunting expeditions. His search finally came to an end when he stumbled upon an extraordinary dog that had the ability to walk on water to retrieve a duck. Astonished by this unique find, he knew that none of his friends would believe him without witnessing it firsthand. He decided to break the news to a particular friend, a perpetual pessimist who was never impressed by anything. Hoping that even his skeptical friend would be amazed by a dog that could walk on water, the hunter invited him to join him and his new dog on a hunting trip in the countryside. However, the hunter strategically avoided mentioning the dog's exceptional talent, he wanted his friend to see it with his own eyes. The two men and the dog arrived at a prime hunting lake and set themselves up along the shore. As they waited, a flock of ducks flew overhead. The men fired their shots, and a duck plummeted into the water. The dog immediately sprang into action and leaped into the water, but instead of sinking, it walked across the surface to retrieve the bird, barely getting its paws wet. This pattern continued throughout the day. Each time a duck fell, the dog miraculously walked across the water's surface to retrieve it. The pessimist observed every detail intently but remained silent. Finally, on the drive home, the hunter nonchalantly asked his friend, so, did you notice anything out of the ordinary about my new dog? I certainly did, replied the pessimist with a sigh. He can't swim. <laughs> Pinocchio is in bed with his girlfriend, engaging in the passionate activities that wooden boys and their girlfriends do together. After their romantic encounter, he notices that she is quietly sobbing. Concerned, he asks her what's wrong, and she tearfully replies, Oh, Pinocchio, you're the most tender and caring lover in the world, but every time we make love, I end up with painful splinters. Deeply troubled by this, Pinocchio decides to consult Geppetto about his predicament. Upon hearing his wooden son's dilemma, Geppetto thoughtfully suggests, Well, my dear boy, perhaps if you gently used some sandpaper on your sensitive areas, it might help alleviate the issue and create a smoother experience for both of you. Feeling hopeful, Pinocchio thanks Geppetto and decides to give the sandpaper a try. A few days later, Geppetto happens to be shopping at the local hardware store when he spots Pinocchio at the counter, excitedly ordering every variety of sandpaper available. Curious, Geppetto approaches Pinocchio, pats him on the shoulder, and says, My boy, I'm willing to bet that, with all these types of sandpaper, you must be having great success with the ladies now, am I right? Pinocchio turns to Geppetto with a wide grin and replies, Girls? Who the heck needs girls? A man walked into a bar and confidently ordered a glass of white wine. Upon receiving his drink, he took a small sip of the wine, and then, without any warning, threw the remainder of the glass directly into the bartender's face. Before the bartender could even recover from the shock and surprise, the man suddenly burst into tears. I'm so sorry, he sobbed. I have this uncontrollable compulsion to do that to bartenders. I can't tell you how mortifying it is to have such an embarrassing issue. To the man's surprise, the bartender was not angry at all. Instead, he was understanding and empathetic. 
He suggested that the man see a therapist to help him work through his problem. As a matter of fact, I have the name of an excellent psychiatrist, the bartender offered. Both my brother and my wife see him, and they both claim he's the best in the business. Three months later, the man returned to the same bar. The bartender recognized him immediately and was eager to find out if he had taken his advice. Did you follow my suggestion? The bartender asked, pouring the man another glass of white wine. I absolutely did, the man replied. I've been attending appointments with that psychiatrist you recommended, twice a week. He then took a sip of the wine and, once again, splashed the rest of the glass into the bartender's face. The bartender, visibly flustered, wiped his face with a towel and stammered, it seems that the doctor hasn't made much progress with you. On the contrary, the man insisted, he's helped me tremendously. But you threw the wine in my face again, the bartender exclaimed, confused. Yes, the man calmly replied, but now, it doesn't embarrass me anymore. Three Brits are sitting around a campfire, singing, laughing, and enjoying their favorite pastime, drinking beer. One of them takes a long, satisfying swig from his bottle, then holds it up to appreciate its contents. Do you know what makes British lager the best in the world? He asks, a proud smile on his face. It's the fact that we age it in barrels made of the finest oak. That's what gives it that unparalleled flavor you won't find anywhere else. Rubbish, his friend scoffs. Oak barrels? That's just a myth. Everyone knows that British beer is the best in the world because our English soil produces the highest quality wheat. That's what gives our beer its rich, full-bodied taste. The third man chimes in, shaking his head, you two are completely misinformed. The secret to the superiority of British beer lies in the exceptional hops used in the brewing process. The three friends continue to argue back and forth, and as the night wears on, the debate becomes increasingly heated. Finally, one of them stands up and says, Lads, lads, we could argue until the sun comes up, or we could actually discover the true reason British beer is the best. Let's collect a sample and send it off to a lab for testing. That way, we'll know for certain. Everyone agrees that this is a fantastic idea, so they carefully pour some of their precious beer into a jar, seal it up in a package, and mail it off to the lab. A week later, Two of the friends are once again gathered around the fire when the third comes sprinting toward them, excitedly waving a letter in the air. Look, lads, the lab sent us the results. They quickly opened the letter and read, Dear sirs, we have conducted comprehensive tests on the sample you provided. The results indicate normal liver and kidney function, acceptable blood sugar levels, and no signs of infection. We are delighted to inform you that your horse is in excellent health.